Yo. I got a 2007 Chrysler Pacific in here. The air conditioning doesn't work. I just put a couple ounces in it just to cycle the system and get free on in here. And I got one of these lovely cheap magic wands that I got online. These are amazingly inexpensive compared to how much they used to cost 20 years ago. I can turn this on. Turn the sensitivity all the way up. And I found a condenser leak. So I'll be replacing that. I'm going to start on the bottom here. I got a bunch of clips. Pull out the centers on those and these pop out. I have a bunch of Phillips screws on the inner fenders. Looks like three of those. Do the same to the other side. They got more fillies here. A couple of 10 millimeters. I did all that so I can get these headlights out. Eight millimeters here. I think these come right out. Looks like there was a child proof connector on here that was broken off. This one's still got one on it. You just got to pull back on this red connector, push in the tab. This one's gone too. It's stuck. Thing don't want to pop up on the inside. Try to do this without breaking the thing. What a bunch of what a bunch of Chrysler. Wow, it didn't break. Amazing. I don't know if it's going to do any good, but I shot some penetrant down under these bolts. I'm going to try to make my life easy and get in here with a 10 millimeter swivel socket and a really long extension. And this one here, I'll just try to get out with a deep 10. <clears throat> try not to bend the fender. There isn't any fog lights or anything on this one. I'm assuming I can just take this off. Got this thing here, looks kind of like a resistor for the for the cooling fan, speed controller, whatever you call it. That's got a red connector on it too, you got to push back, push in a tab and hopefully this comes off. Looks like there's four 13 millimeters to get this bumper off. There's two more in the bottom on this side. Got some more fancy clips here to take off. Looks like the clip for this sensor just has a push clip in it. You just push in the center and then it comes out. And when I go put it back in, I wanna I wanna pop this out and then put it back in and push it in. Get that out of the way. And I got a few clips for this. This thing already discharged on its own, so there's no refrigerant in it. These are 13 millimeters. 
you want to make sure there's no system pressure in here. These lines will blow off and make a huge mess. This has the transmission cooler in it. I'm probably going to wind up getting a little transmission fluid all over the place. I want to pop these caps off of here. They're corroded a little bit. They're not too bad. Either you can get a pick in here and take these clips out, like so. Try not to bend them if you're going to reuse them. I got one of these too. They kind of work. Kind of. Push, turn, pull out the line. Well, I think there's just two 10 millimeters left on the radiator. <laughs> And uh, there's, there's two tabs down here holding it in so I can just lift up and take it out. I'm going to drain as much fluid as I can out of here too. And however much comes out, I'm going to put back in and check the transmission after I get done. The accumulator receiver dryer is on this condenser, so I don't need to replace that. I'm going to need to add two ounces of oil to this system. I'm just going to dump it right in here. That way I don't have to put it in later. Anytime you do one of these condensers with a receiver dryer in it, you should add at least two, two extra ounces of oil. I should actually put more in it because it had a slow leak. It wouldn't hurt to put three ounces in it because a slow leak usually seeps out at least another ounce. I got an extra ounce PEG 46 that has no dye oil in it. That should be good. I didn't get any seals with this condenser, so I just lubricated these really good. They should seal. I don't want to go gallivanting all over the countryside trying to find new seals for this. There's a metal gasket and an o-ring on these. They're probably sealed just fine. Now before I go slapping this thing together, I'm going to want to put some vacuum onto this system. The cold side Schrader valve is way down there. You can see the little blue connector. And then the hot side's easy to find. I'm going to use this fancy Harbor Freight Super Sucker. I just plug shop air into it. Open these all the way up. I'm supposed to suck vacuum on this for 15 minutes. So they say. The biggest reason why I want to do this is to get out as much air as possible. And I also want to check for leaks. So I put enough vacuum on it. Now I'm just going to close these valves. And I'm going to let it sit for the remainder of the remainder. And this vacuum shouldn't go anywhere. Generally you want to leave it sit for 40 minutes to a half an hour to make sure all the leaks are gone. The catalyst says I got to add 1.5 pounds. So that'd be one pound, eight ounces on my scale. I'm just going to turn the cold side on and let as much go in as it can. It held good vacuum. Okay, I took it all. I didn't even have to start it up. Now I'll fire it up, leave the AC on high, see what happens to this thing. There's my system pressures. That's how cold it is in the car. These transmissions don't have a dipstick. They just got a goofy tube with this cap on it. It's 
so there's a way to check it with a dipstick that you can buy but I'm not gonna do that I just drained all this out and there's about five ounces of ATF plus four that I gotta put back in it I'm gonna go to the parts store and get some just dump it in and call it a job okay bye